Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. I hope you guys are all having a good day so far. So in this video today, I'm back again with another coding project which we'll be building together. So what we have here is this API project. How it works is it's sort of like an activity project. So you can click this button here and it'll give you some sort of activity that you can do. And it's going to be random every single time you click the button and it just shuffles around. So eventually you'll get duplicates and come across the same one but basically it lists to you your activity and you can decide whether whether or not you want to do the activity or not and it, it also tells you other information like what type of activity it is like in this case volunteering is a charity so that's why it has charity there, charity there as the type and participants I misspelled it but for this particular activity you only need one participant and that is you and let's keep going so we got go to an escape room so this is more of like a social thing so it's going to require more people so four would be the ideal number and yeah that's basically how this works and the cool thing that I like about this project is um let me refresh real quick so at the beginning you, you see how we have this h1 here which says don't know what to do question mark click the button below to find a fun activity and then we have the button here at this much larger size but then everything changes as soon as we click the button as you can see right after I click the button that h1 disappeared and the button also shrink down a little bit and also shifted down as well so we'll be using some CSS styling and JavaScript manipulation to implement that logic into our project so yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this demo and let's get right into the video alright so I'm in Visual Studio Code right now and I just pretty much created and I just basically created a file, an HTML file and called it board API but you can call it whatever you want and now we can start setting up our project so let's create our boilerplate code and then go in between the body tags and create an h1 and as you remember from the demo that I showed you earlier this h1 let's give it some class first and then in here we just want to type don't know what to do and then we'll just say click the button below to find a fun activity and if you want to style things up a little better you can even add a little emoji okay that's the wrong emoji but whatever we'll work with it <laughs> and then let's go underneath the h1 create a div give it an id of container and let's also give this a class name this is sort of like a utility class because we're using it for different purposes and let's just give it a class of invisible so obviously even regardless of whether the container has a class name of invisible or not we haven't declared it in our CSS so it's going to show up no matter what so inside of our container we just want to have a p tag let's give this an ID of activity and let's give this a class and we'll just say activity and let's just copy this down four more times this will be type and this will be participants this time I actually spelled it correctly and then this will be accessibility if I spelled that correctly and keep in mind that all of these ID names are going to be lowercase oops and then accessibility all right so now let's go underneath our div and create a button and let's give it an ID of button and we'll just call it get activity and then put a little smiley face on it and now let's go to our CSS by creating these two style tags pasting in these Google fonts that I got from fonts.google.com so if you don't know how to find it let me show you so you want to go to your web browser and search up fonts.google.com now it's going to take you to this website where it has a bunch of different font types that you can choose from so I simply searched up Poppins and then Montserrat so you go here to Poppins and then I think I selected this one so it was regular 400 so just click on that and then let's remove the, the older one so click that again and then you can choose between a link tag or an add import statement but I'm just going to use the add import because it's shorter so you just want to copy all this here and then just simply paste that in and you can do the same for monster out as well so now that we got that out of the way we can start with our basic styling so let's grab all the elements on our page including the pseudo elements and let's do margin 0 including margin 0 and let's do padding 0 box sizing will be border box and our next thing we're going to style is our body 
So let's give it a background color of this color right here. So it, it was that dark blue color that we had at the beginning of the video. And there we go, we have our basic HTML code um, on our UI. So right now it still looks pretty ugly. Now let's grab our container and let's do display flex on that and do this justify content center. So this will center all the items in the container and just align them better. And let's do align item center as well. Background will be RGB, 148, 143, and then 221. Let's do flex direction column just to stack all of our elements on top of each other. And then let's do min width 750 pixels, position of absolute, top of 50%, left 50% and transform translate and then for the padding let's just do 35 pixels 15 pixels by the way keep in mind that this project is not responsive whatsoever I'm just eyeballing these values and after padding let's give it a border radius of 10 pixels just to round off the corners let's do box shadow of 0, 0 10 pixel blur RGBA and this is going to be a white color with a 20% opacity so it's going to be sort of darker and that's going to be our box shadow so to make this more prominent I can change this to 40 and as you can see our box shadow spread it out even further so now it's more prominent but let's just change it back to 10 and now we can do cursor pointer so that when we hover over it our cursor turns into a pointer so as you can see here my cursor looks like this but right after I hover over it, it changes. Now let's grab our container again and then grab all the direct childs within it and give them a color of white, font family, sans serif, and, and, and another alternative to selecting the same element instead of doing this notation here is you can give each of these p tags a class of something, of some, some class name, you can give it whatever you want and then selecting it that way instead. But this is just another shortcut and another way you can select stuff in CSS so we'll just work with that and then font size will be 1.45 rem now let's create a class called poppins font family will be poppins as the class name suggests and let's create another one called Montserrat and as you may have guessed this will have a class name of Montserrat Sans Serif and let's give this class a font size of 1.25 rem and all this will make sense once we start writing our JavaScript. And let's create another class and call it bold and just do font weight bold. So as you can see, we have not referenced any of these class poppins, monstrat, or bold in our HTML at all, but we'll, you'll see how all this will play out once we start writing the JavaScript part. And now let's grab our A tag and do text decoration none. And just like all the others, this one has also the A tag. We have not used an A tag at all in our HTML body so that's going to be done in JavaScript. Let's just give it a color of white and then animation will be animation fade 1.75s linear infinite and now let's define a an animation key and inside of this keyframe we want to say at 25% of the animation that is completed we want the opacity to be 55% and then at 50% we want the opacity to be at 75% so it's increasing gradually over time and then at 75% we want the opacity to be 100% so it's going to be back to what it was originally and now we're going to define our invisible class so let's just give this an opacity of zero so that it's completely invisible it doesn't show up at all and then create another class call it visible and we'll just say opacity of 100% so whenever we give the invisible class to any of our elements in our body it's still technically existing on our HTML document. It's just not showing up because we gave it an op opacity of zero. And then now let's grab our button and do position absolute. Let's do top 50%. So that same trick I was showing you guys earlier. So I'll just copy and paste all this in here. And we want to add an additional property, which is a scale. And we want to scale it by 2.3. So now let's do padding 15 pixels. 75 pixels border radius 5 pixels to round off the corners and let's get rid of the border and once again we're going to give this a cursor of pointer font family will be poppins and then for our h1 we just want to say text align 
center. Let's do font family. Montserrat color will be white. Padding will be padding top will be 65 pixels. And that is all of, all of our CSS styles that we need for this project. So let's take a look at it. So as you can see, we have our basic setup now. Although the button doesn't work yet because we haven't added any event listeners. So let's go do that now. So I'm going to go right below my button and create a script tag. And then in here, I just want to define a function and then name this function. You can name it whatever you want, but I want to be specific and to keep things clear and easy to understand. So I'm going to call it fetch activity. And here we just want to do container dot class list dot replace. And let's just say invisible and replace it with visible. So whenever we click our button, we want to replace the containers class name, which was originally invisible. So we want to replace this with visible so that it actually shows up because right, right now, if we go back, you'll see that our container doesn't show up. But if I get rid of the prefix here and then go back there we go our container shows up right behind our button so let's bring it back to what it was before and make it invisible and let's grab our header do the same thing so let's replace visible with invisible so this will do the same thing for our header so right now it's not invisible so let's add the prefix here and now that goes away but let's bring it back and for our button we just want to give it a style dot top of 75% so if you guys remember from our CSS styles, we gave our button a top value of 50%. But over here, right after we click the button, we want it to shift down by another 25%. So that's going to move it down. So if I were to, well, first we haven't added any event listener yet. So let's go do that now. So we'll just say button dot add event listener and have it run the function fetch activity. Now, if we click our button, it shifts down and our container actually shows up. So that's pretty cool. And now we want to do button dot style dot transform. And we want to say translate negative 50%, negative 50%. So those values remain the same. And now we just want to scale it by 1.4. So if you guys remember, our button used to be used to have a scale of 2.3. So now we're shrinking it down to 1.4. And then let's fetch our API. Unfortunately, I don't have my API link with me, so I'll just have to manually type it out. So it's HTTP colon slash slash triple W board API dot com slash API slash activity and then slash. So if I type that correctly, then everything after this should work. And now we're going to say dot then there's another way of fetching APIs. You can use the async await function, but we're just going to use fetch in this video. And then in here, we'll just say res.json. So we're converting it to JSON. And then after that, we want to have a parameter called data. And let's go in between these two curly braces and just say console log data. So now if I open up my console and then go to my console and click on my button, as you can see, it logged out to our console and activity object so in here we have the activity value name and then we have participants type price and link so everything after this should be pr pretty self-explanatory if you're pretty comfortable with javascript so what we want to do in here is just say if data dot link so basically if there's a link that leads to another web page in our object and that thing exists in there then we want to do activity dot inner HTML and we just want to say template literal strings and then let's create a span give this a class of poppins so now going back to what we had before in our CSS style this poppins class will be applied to whatever goes in between these this span tag here so it's going to be applied to the word activity with the colon and then right after it we want to have an a tag so we say that right there Let's give it an href of the data link. So data dot link and let's zoom out for a second. And in between the a tag, we want to have another span. <laughs> and let's give this a class of Montserrat bold animation so this is going to have three class styles being applied to it if that kind of makes sense and then in between the span we're just going to say data dot activity so this is going to display our activity name 
And then just for a little bonus, we can also say learn more. And if data link doesn't exist, then we just want to run whatever code comes after the else statement. So now we just want to say activity dot inner HTML equals and from this point on it's going to get pretty repetitive so I'm just going to copy this here and make some slight adjustment to the activity so for this activity instance we don't want it, we don't want it to have an a tag so let's get rid of this and we also want to get rid of these additional class names and just keep monster on and do type this will be participants and this will be accessibility and now let's go through each one and change them one by one. So this will be data dot type. This will be data dot participants. So num the number of participants needed for this activity. And this last one, let's change it to accessibility. And yeah, that should be it. So let's go test it out one more time. And let me refresh just to make sure we don't have any errors. Let's close our console, refresh. So awesome, we don't have any errors. Let's give this another go and then wrap it up for the video. So activity play a game of Monopoly. I also forgot to change the caption for each one of these. So this should say activity and then type and then participant and then accessibility. So let's go change that. This is activity. This will be type. This will be number of participants and this will be accessibility. So now that should work. So let's go back and yes, awesome everything is working the way we want so yeah guys um i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did make sure to leave a like and subscribe i would massively appreciate it because we're on our way to 500 subs now and this channel has grown significantly this year thanks to your support so i really appreciate what what you guys have done for me and yeah if you want to see more videos like this definitely let me know down in the comment section below other than that have a nice day and i'll see you guys in my next video